Hey everyone, I'm Steve Harris and welcome to our Superhero Slider tutorial video. The Superhero Slider widget is one of our most highly requested widgets and what it allows you to do is set up these full screen, full height hero images, so big images typically on the home page that of course you can transition between slides. You can set up a caption, headline and also a call to action button. Now the really great thing about Superhero is no matter what your browser height is, so if I just shrink the browser down here, I'm going to reload the gallery and you'll notice that the hero loads full screen and when I scroll down the page content starts immediately below that. So that's where the real power of the superhero slider is, is loading in that full viewport size. So let me jump into Architect and show you how to set this up. Okay, so I'm here on a blank page in Architect and I'm just going to go to the widgets panel and drag out the superhero slider and I'm going to place it in the topmost row on my site below the header. So as you can see when it loads by default we've got a couple of slides already set up and we can transition between those slides. So let's go ahead and run through the panel options and I'll explain what everything means. First up we have transition time, so that's in milliseconds, that's the transition time between each of the slides in your gallery. Next up we have the style, so we can have it slide, fade, cube, a couple of cool options in there. Next we have the image position, so this is the origin of where you want your image to be positioned. So we can have the image start in the top right corner. We could have it be center top, perfectly centered in the box. Basically what this means is how is your image going to crop? Is it going to crop off the left bottom side? Is it going to crop off evenly around all sides? So you have some fairly fine positioning control for your image. Next we've got some toggles here. We have enable loop mode. Basically that's just going to loop the gallery again and again. We have enable grab cursor. So let me turn that on and I'm going to preview this and now you see when I mouse over the gallery I get this kind of grab hand icon in the browser. Now I can actually click and drag on the images to transition between the next slide. The next setting we have here is for pagination control. So if I turn that on, what it's going to do is place three little dots at the bottom of my slider. Right now they're hard to see because they're kind of blue and dark but basically just gives you three dots to be able to transition between the slides as needed. I'm going to turn that off for now. The next setting we have is called header height and this is one of the most important settings on this widget. So what we have here is the ability for you to deduct the height of your header on your site off of the superhero slider. So what that means is the superhero slider is always going to load below the header area and because of that you'll notice that it's actually extending a little bit beyond the bottom of the browser. So if I scroll down there's a little bit too much hero before my page content starts. So what we can do here is we can just add a value and we want to add the approximate value of our header area. So I'm just going to guess and say it's about 100 pixels. And what that's going to do is shrink the vertical size of the slider down by 100 pixels. So now you see when I scroll down, it's much closer to the bottom of the browser size. Now we may want to do some finer adjustment here. So if I just kind of nudge my slider up a bit by dragging this up, then it's tight to the header area. Another option we could do is if I were to say make this header transparent, so let me make the header background transparent, just like that. And then if I go into the superhero slider widget, I'm going to go to the design tab and the spacing section. If I were to add a negative margin to the top, let's say minus 100 pixels, you'll notice that it's moving it closer to the top of the browser. So this is a little trick for you to do these full height, full screen heroes and actually have your navigation items behind the superhero element. Let's try minus 120 pixels. There, so now it's nice and tight to the top of the browser. Now you'll notice that it is actually not fully extending to the bottom of my browser. So this is where I may want to adjust that header height. So I'm going to set that to zero. So we're not deducting anything off of it. And now we're going from the top of the browser all the way perfectly to the bottom of the browser window. I'm going to undo those settings for now. So I'll reset the spacing there and I'll leave my header height at zero. The next options we have are for the individual slide content. So if I go into the list item, this is list item one. If I scroll to the top there, we can add our image. So we can upload an image here or I could click on it. We can access the free image library built in here. So if I go to free images, and I search for something like tech. Let's say this picture of the windmills and I hit select. It's going to import it automatically. You'll notice that this is a photo that's pulled in from Unsplash. 
which is a free stock photo resource. Below that, we have the options for setting our caption. So this is the slide title, the main headline. We have the subtitle below. Then we can enable or disable a call to action button, change that button text, add some margin to the top of the button. So if I wanted to bring that button down a little bit, I could add a bigger margin to the top. Then we can set a link to that button. So it can be an existing page, an outside URL. It could even do a pop-up or a file for download. So you'll just want to work through adding list items as needed. So I can add a new one here, setting up your image and your caption and button styles. So that's it for the content tab of this widget. And if we look in the design tab now, you'll see that we mainly have text styling options. So first up, we have the title styling options, then below the subtitle styling, and then of course the button styling below that. We can change the button size here if we want something a little bit wider and bigger. The next option below that is the arrow color. So this is the arrows on the left and right side of the slider. Now you'll notice if you bring up the drop down, we only have three options built in, blue, white, and black. What we've done to keep page speeds lightning fast is we've used SVG images for these arrows. So because they're actually placed SVGs, they cannot be recolored easily. So we've just built in some common options. I would think black and white is likely the most appropriate options for these arrows. But if users are finding they need more styling control, we can revisit this in the future. Next up, we have the pagination color. So right now it's set to black. Remember, those are the three dots that are on the bottom of my slider. I have the pagination dots turned off right now, but when we turn them back on, this is where you'll change the color. So that's it for settings on this widget. Probably the most important setting that you'll need to remember is this header height option to deduct the height of the header from your superhero slider. And if you need some help finding the height of this header, typically what we've been doing is we've just been screen capping it and measuring it in a photo editing software like Photoshop. You can also just play around with guessing at the size when I tried 120 pixels. When I scrolled down, the page content started right away. So I'd say that's close enough for my needs. So that's it for the superhero slider widget. Thanks again for watching.